what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to go to uh, a page and I'm going to type jam.new, which is a short little trick to be able to do one really fast. And I'll give it a title, testing, and I have about 15,000 testing. And then I'm going to open up my Equatio extension. So students automatically have the Equatio extension installed for them um, as long as they're in their OCSV student account. Teachers have to go through the process and install it. Um, if they haven't done so, uh, I can give you some information on how to do that if, if you have teachers who need that. Um, but I'm going to assume for the time being that everyone already has it installed. You get this toolbar that pops up along the bottom with lots of fun stuff. Um, the other thing you want to make sure is under the options, you go to math options and you've turned on both the chemistry and the formulas because the default is not on where you have the predictive piece that you can access here. So that comes in handy with the um, equatio. So I'm just going to hit save and then I'm going to open up my equation editor and let's say I start typing, I want to do um, sodium. I have sodium chloride. If you want to get a subscript, you can start typing the word subscript and it'll give you subscript. So you can put in your state. So we have aqueous plus, let's say, uh, whatever, water. Let's see what comes up when we type water and get my H2O. And a shortcut for a subscript would be shift and the underscore. Um, and I'm going to just call that one a liquid. And then I can type yields and I can either have it with my heat on top or not. Um, and then, so anyway, that's just sort of a quick little thing. Um, then I'm gonna go over to the side right here and it says copy math as, and I'm gonna click on it and I have to select image. And then this is always gonna, you can turn this off, um, but it's already been copied. I'm gonna click on my Jamboard and do control V and then there I have whatever equatio math that I had. Or if you wanna just grab a question from somewhere else with a screenshot, all that kind of stuff, it works the same. The insert the math space right here, that's where you can build structures and shapes. I, like, I think of grade 10 science where you're looking at um, mirrors and looking at ray diagrams and all those different things. They have all of those different shapes um, in here for that or circuits. You can build all the different circuits and things like that. They have all the symbology there for that. So if I were to just pick, say, a plane mirror. Oops, that's too little. Where are you? I'm clicking too fast. And you could search it. All right, there we go. Here we go. We got our mirror. Then if I wanted to put in a line. And if you hit shift, it'll just keep going straight. And then if I want it to add my, I don't know, focal point or something, eh, wherever, blah, 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 blah. Then I'm ready to share it. So you go up top up here where it says insert. And then same thing, you get this exact same message. I've, I've kept it on there so I know that I've copied the image that I think I am. And I'm on my Jamboard. I'm going to do control V. And then... Put it wherever you want, put it on a different slide. If you do control C again, you can put it on a different slide or duplicate the slide. So we have the Jamboard. You can build all your content in here, taking screenshots, all that different kind of stuff. Then you're ready to share it with kids. So you want to do an assessment, let's say, where you want to be able to have students add their work onto the actual Jamboard. If you go to your Hapara workspace, I thought I had it open, I guess not. Oh, no, I do right there. Okay. And then open up the workspace that you're looking for. And then I'm going to create a new card and I'm going to put in, uh, I don't know, quiz. And then I'm going to go to my drive and upload it from the drive. So I called that testing five and it's there. So it's linked in. You can change the start dates and all that kind of stuff. It's, and then I'm going to hit done. And just like all your other, um, stuff that you use in a par in that third column, 
once the students hit submit after they've put all their work onto it, then they can't change it anymore. It removes the privileges. So back in September and in the fall, the submit wasn't working for Jamboard. So you didn't have that option. Students would always be able to edit it after the fact. Um, however, now that submit piece is working. So you as the teacher, when you go to open it, um, you, you can go in and annotate it and give feedback in those pieces. The other thing that's nice for students, if they have a Jamboard open and they're looking to, um, they don't have a touch screen or they like writing on paper and inserting photos and different things like that, the most efficient way of doing that is actually using Equatio Mobile. And I'm gonna drop a link to this doc um, that is a trouble troubleshooting that you can share with students or just even how to use it. And it walks through how to link your phone, pictures or your iPad. I test it with the iPad. It can be an Android or a um, any device where you can scan a QR code. So if I'm in this jam as a student, I've done my work on a piece of paper. I'm gonna open up the Equatio Mobile. So then I'm gonna grab my phone and I'm physically gonna do it now so you can see what happens. Don't you scan this QR code because it it's it has to be linked to the, the person's Google account because that's how they're gonna match it up. So I'm gonna scan this QR code and then it, you're gonna open it. It's gonna ask you to log in to your Google account. And then it says fetching documents. So it's looking for any Google documents that you have open. All right, there we go. Found my document. Uh, there's a camera icon, so I'm gonna take a picture. And I had already did up some uh, a carboxylic acid and an alcohol and I made an ester. All right, so I'm inserting my image. And I, if you're looking at my screen, this pops up. Math has been added to your clipboard. I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm gonna click on the screen, control V. This is the image that I took once it loads. There we go. So I, I did that work on a piece of paper. I used it. I didn't have to download it in the drive. I didn't have to save anything. All I had to do was scan the QR code, log into Google, take the picture, and then hit insert. And I was able to put it right on the Jamboard. And then what's nice for you as the teacher is in terms of being able to annotate, you can annotate quite nicely on um, a Jamboard. No, no worries, Amanda. It's, it's lovely hearing children. <laughs> Um, so then, so that's, yeah, so that's essentially where the Jamboard piece can be. Any of the stuff that you have already created, you can very easily take a screenshot. You don't need to add images always by clicking the add image here. As long as you do a screenshot and do control C to copy it, hit the slide that you want to be on, do control V, it'll put it right in there. So you don't need any of that go between. That's kind of equational math space. You have, there's a little bit more of a rigmarole to get images in there. Um, but in the Jamboard, screenshots work perfectly. So instead of re retyping everything sometimes, um, it's easier to do it that way. If there's something you're worried about being deleted though, like a kid's moving things around, or let's say they're, if you did set up a ray diagram or something like that, and you don't want them to be able to move it around, you can go in and set it as the background. So then that becomes the slide and they can't change anything to it. They can just add. So you will have to have that saved as an image. So if I were to go to a new frame and go to set background, grab this image, I'll just find something um google drive all right so now this is the background nobody can do anything on this background right now so if you had a question where you want kids to be able to interact with it without running the risk of them accidentally deleting and not knowing that control z is undo or anything like that you can set your background as the question that you want them to work on is am i missing anything jen that we talked about and can we go back to Hapara just to, yeah. um, I don't know if you want to just show how that, if we can get that in with locking it in before, and then what feedback. Well, just to show once the student submits the work that it is locked to any editing. Well, so if you've, it's the same as if you've done it with a doc, if you've yeah. submitted it or anything like that. The only difference that's going to happen with the Jamboard when you go in to evaluate it, 
it's beautiful now on a doc where you have that screen come up where you can type the feedback in and the grade and everything. And it's right next to it with the Jamboard that doesn't happen. You have to open up the Jamboard separately so that you still have those um, annotating um, options. It, it'll put a link there when you, and you just click on it and you can go to it. You can still put comments in that box. However, it's not side by each when you're, um, when you're looking at it. So like, I think this is the one I tested with Jen um, before that's, um, just to make sure that it worked the way that it did. So you can see that I assessed it. So I sent it back for final and assessed it. So all of those things work the, work the same way.